I would say, I mean, I would pay over $999 to go. I would pay really? somewhere in the thousands. Yeah, at 100%. You would pay thousands? Yeah. I, I think would. thousand would be a threshold for me. As m- <laughs> Welcome back to the Cypress Room, where we dive deep on influencing with integrity. I'm Maggie Honeycutt. And I'm Christina Muscari. And we're back in the podcast room today with a fun podcast studio with a fun episode for you. This is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one, you guys. It's all going to be about in sync. And I know (laughs) we have had three episodes back to back to back that are really fun. And we actually recorded last week three really deep, Mm -hmm. deep episodes that we're actually a little anxious about putting out, but we think they're really important to come out. But so much happened last week with InSync that I said to Maggie, I was like, I feel like we need to do an InSync episode. <laughs> Absolutely. So, <laughs> and she said she was in 100%. Yes, because Christina and I grew up in the 80s and 90s. The boy band era mm-hmm. in the early 2000s was like our prime. Yeah. We're freshmen in college. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I feel like we have to talk about it. And everybody's talking about it. Again, it's like Bama Rush Talk. It took over my TikTok feed. There were women who broke this story before NSYNC even showed up on the VMAs. I mean, it is crazy how people can just get information and how it can just take off like wildfire now because of social media. We also really loved the social media strategy that NSYNC has kind of come out with. So we're going to dive deep into the stuff that they put out, how they put it out, how people are responding to it. So there's still, you know, influencer (laughs) social media things to learn from this. Yes. Um, And I think it's just everybody my age is talking about this right now. And we know a lot of you guys are, you know, 40, 40 plus. Yes. And even the millennials, the millennials are into this too. Because like me, I my first introduction into boy bands was New Kids on the Block and I yes, was same here. probably 8 we were like 8 or 9 years old. Yeah. So I know there were when InSync came out we were in we were 18 17 18 when they first came out but I know that there are little girls who were 8 years old who like their yes. first crush was Justin Timberlake so I hope you guys are tuning into this too. This is definitely one where we want to hear you in the comments. We want to hear your in sync stories. We want to hear what you think about all the theories that are going on. Are we getting a tour? We know we're getting new music, but we definitely want you guys to be involved in this. Yes. Sound off in the comments. Yeah. And <laughs> um, we are going to do, you know, our favorite things is our new thing that we're incorporating into every single episode. Yes. And today we're going to be talking about some of our favorite fall fashion finds. Yes. That are coinciding with an exclusive LTK sale that is going to be kicking off on Friday. And so if you mm-hmm. shop in our LTK, you are going to be getting extra savings. So stick around to the end to learn all about that. Yes. But let's just dive right in. Dive right in. <laughs> <laughs> well, for those of you who are like, who is in sync? Oh, I mean, it's you really should probably hard just to turn me. the podcast off now. <laughs> it's hard we'll for you. me to believe that you wouldn't <laughs> know that. But in sync was one of the top boy bands of its era. They helped de- kind of define that sound of danceable R and B influence, like early two thousands pop, and it really launched the career of um, some of the old Mickey Mouse Club stars, John Justin Timberlake and Jay. Chazé. Chazé. Sorry. That, I oh still... my gosh. My love and you're mispronouncing <laughs> oh his gosh. name. My first love. I have a real love now named Michael Muscari. But um, if you were a Mickey Mouse Club fan, were you a Mickey Mouse Club fan? Are you kidding me? Like, I loved it, but we never had cable. So it was oh, like Megan, I made strategic so friendships with people who did have cable okay. so that I could watch the Mickey Mouse Club because I loved it so much. I loved the Mickey Mouse Club. And, you know, my son was asking me the other day, he's like, Mom, when you were growing up, like, what did you want to be? What was your dream? And I thought back and my dream was to be on the Mickey Mouse Club. Really? To be able to act and sing and dance. Like, that was my dream. So when I watch those kids, I'm wow. like, I wish I could try out for the Mickey Mouse Club. I wish I could be on the Mickey Mouse Club. So it was a huge part of my childhood as oh well. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> well, so InSync worked with the famous producer Max Martin mm-hmm. and then Dennis Pop and enjoyed, I mean, they were successful almost immediately. And they hit the top five in the U.S. and Europe 
with their debut hits, I Want You Back and Tearing Up My Heart. I was mm-hmm. listening to that on the way over this morning. <laughs> 2000s, No Strings Attached, and their final album, 2001, Celebrity, fared even better, both topping the Billboard 200. And then they took a hiatus, sad yeah. day, in 2002, so mm-hmm. that Justin could pursue his solo career, which who, yeah. I was still a huge fan of all of his solo stuff. Yeah. Still am. Yeah. So. But this was back in the day before streaming, before mm-hmm. streaming music. And every single record they put out after that debut one, like broke records for sales, like millions of sales in one day. And that's when you used to physically have to go to a store and buy a CD. So if you're thinking about how many people actually went out to physically buy their music, like that stuff is never going to happen again. I know people can download things super easily from home, but the commitment that it would take people to go to the store and buy music, it just shows in what demand they were (laughs) yes i mean think about it there was no social media to Mm -hmm. promote a record this was the era of mtv and trl Mm -hmm. which i loved that too and so to be have this much success without the you know now we have so much access to information and it wasn't that way so it's pretty incredible that what they achieved without social media right and digital streaming because mm-hmm. we have easy access to music now. Yeah. I mean, I just get on my Apple Music. I know, and- which I love because I was <laughs> able to, as it was stirred up in me of like how much I used to love this band and be invested in them, I went back and listened to all three albums in their entirety. I didn't do the Christmas albums, guys, because I'm, I'm not feeling <laughs> them. I never owned the Christmas albums. I'm not feeling yeah. it. Although I really do like their original Christmas song. <laughs> Um, and the first two albums, I knew every single word to every single song. Then by the okay. third album, I was like, oh, I don't know these songs as well. I know the singles, but I don't know the songs as well. So I can see why at that point they were like, okay, the pop, the sound, the pop sound was changing at yeah. that thing. And I could see how Justin's like, you know, I'm just kind of ready to go yeah. in a different direction and do more R and B and, you know, incorporate more rap. And I don't think in sync, they tried to make that transition with their girlfriend single, but I don't think that they could have made that hard of a transition as a group. So yeah. I understand the evolution of it. And obviously Justin Timberlake is beyond talented Mm -hmm. and has been so successful. I've been to his tours as well and they're very impressive and just like his range and the different types of things that he can do. It's very unique. So I see why he was successful, even though it broke my heart that they broke up. Yes. (laughs) But we need to bring it on back to why we're even talking about this today. I know. So, (laughs) you know, there was this moment that they reunited in 2013 at the Mm -hmm. VMAs. That was 10 years ago. And that was 10 years ago. But we haven't seen or heard much from them as a group. Mm -mm. Nothing. Crickets for 10 years. And all of a sudden, we start getting some previews of a new movie that's coming out. Yeah. That's how it first came out. That is how it first came out. And what is crazy is that, so Trolls 3 is coming out. If you're not, if you don't have kids and you haven't seen the troll movies, they're super cute. Justin Timberlake has been in all of them and they're all really centered around music and have great soundtracks. And for this one, you know, the first trailer came out and there was a rumor that it was going to be all about boy bands and um, that, that actually branch his character originated in a boy band. (laughs) And so it's going to be like kind of the um, origin story of how he started out in this boy band. He's on his search for, I don't know if they're his brothers or whatever the story is. Yeah. Something like that. So that's all we knew. Yeah. And I think there was kind of rumblings of like, well, do you think there's going to, do you think NSYNC is going to make a cameo, whatever? And then all of a sudden this billboard popped up, I think about a month ago Mm -hmm. in New York City. It's just a billboard. Like how old school is that? It's like they didn't even, they didn't even put it out on social media anywhere. There was billboards like in Times Square, I think. And um, it had like the poster had five different people and all the hair basically looked like in sync. You could be like, Oh, this is Justin. This is Lance. This is Joey with the flame hair. And so you clicked on like the QR code to go there and it just took you to a thing saying like coming soon. It was just like this whistle tune. And from that, and just the image of five hair that kind of look like in sync, all these theories started popping up. Yes. And I saw it mostly on TikTok. Mm-hmm. People would be like, we're getting new music. We're getting new music. I'm like, no way. I was like, maybe, maybe we are. Maybe we're getting new music. And so there were kind of like all these rumblings. 
And there were already theories going on at that point that not only we're getting new music, but there's going to be a reunion tour because the Ticketmaster bio of NSYNC got updated. Oh, so that, yeah, oh, I have been okay. deep. I have been I deep. didn't know the Ticketmaster part. <laughs> I have been deep into TikTok um, and all these theories. And it's all women just like me that are in their 40s that are just, you know, probably were just very in love with NSYNC back in the day. <laughs> well, and let's think, I mean, Justin... Uh, Timberlake produced the soundtrack for all of the mm-hmm. Trolls movies. And I have to say that first Trolls soundtrack, I was obsessed with it. Me and my kids mm-hmm. listened to it and they absolutely loved it. And from there, I introduced my kids to NSYNC. We okay. started playing it. So my both of my kids love the No Strings Attached album because we played Bye Bye mm-hmm. Bye. My and kids it's love Bye Bye Bye. Me. It's a banger. Like, I, that's been a really fun way to like relive the boy band era is through trolls and my kids loving in sync too. So that's really fun. And I, I think it's really cool how they're, they've really done these like breadcrumbs mm-hmm. like along the way. And there's a couple more. Yeah. I mean, beyond the billboard. Well, what was the big one that just happened? The, the, the reason we had to hold this emergency podcast well, situation, the VMAs or the VMAs. Oh, okay, I thought you were gonna say it was the video that Justin put out of them. No, in that the came studio. after. That came yeah, after the okay. VMAs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So <laughs> they were at the VMAs and they presented Taylor Swift with the pop is pop album of yeah, the year, right? I think pop video of the year. Pop video, which is okay. so funny that they even still have video music awards be- on MTV because they don't even show videos anymore. Yeah, I don't <laughs> so, even know what they show on I MTV anymore. We don't have MTV, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So they all reappeared, mm-hmm. which was mind-blowing yeah mind-blowing mind-blowing and the internet exploded and like the fact that you know when they came out the camera zoomed in on taylor swift right away which is like the biggest person in pop culture right now with her tour and how successful everything is and seeing her starstruck someone who has just made billions of dollars on this tour and is going to continue to make money on it and just the success she's had to see her be like oh my gosh freaking out and like humbled to be in their presence was just like a really cool tie-in yeah and i loved that and so then after we got that appearance on the vmas they started dropping all these little like short form videos yes and they did you know like trends they did a trending sound of that friends interaction (laughs) where where uh jennifer aniston's character and joey both know that monica and chandler are dating but like and they're trying to be like well do you know what i know i don't know do you know something i know oh well i can't tell you what i know if you don't tell me what you know and they all did this little like lip syncing thing to that it was so cute like so timely understanding the culture that they're in now is different and that they have to do something like that and i love how you know, just unserious they could be about it. And that's yeah. why where my hope is that maybe we could get a tour because everybody's like, oh, Justin's too, he's too big to ever do a reunion tour. But seeing him have fun with his friends that he grew up with that like were the foundation of his success. It's that community thing that yes. we always talk about yes. here. It just seems like they're having a lot of fun. And they're all, you know, they've all come into their own. Most of them have kids and families and have had success in different areas. I know Joey's done a lot of shows and Broadway stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, Lance is a, you know, a TikTok star in his own right and seeing him come into his own and he has a podcast and all that stuff. So just to see them kind of just humble themselves and come together and realize where they've come from and have fun with it was really cool to see. Do you... I mean, how much of this do you think was inspired from seeing the success of other boy bands do reunion tours? Do you think it's completely separate? I feel like it is separate just because Backstreet Boys and New Kids on the Block have been touring for a long time. So I think it's proof that like, hey, you can do it and have fun and it's not going to ruin your reputation or anything. I think they've gotten to the point where they're old enough where it's like, if we do do something, it's just going to be to honestly give back to their fans and I know people always say that oh I want to give back to my fans but I do really think that they mean it when you get to your 40s they're our age 40 and 40 plus it you just don't care anymore about what people think about you and you really just want to honor people who have brought you to where you are so I think maybe they're in that spot and they they're all pretty successful in their own right I don't think they're any of them are really hurting for money I think it would just be a 
like, let's give this back to the fans and let's have some fun. And who cares what people think about us? And if we're a little overweight and we're a little slower than we used to be (laughs) and we can't do all the cool dance stuff and not everybody wants us and is desiring us. It's just, we just want to be nostalgic and like have that feeling again of being like young and carefree. So I think maybe that's where they're at. Yeah. Not only that, they're really expanding their fan base by doing trolls. Yeah, that's true. Because it's not only going to be us 40, 30, 40 somethings, they're going to bring in all different ages because trolls is so popular. I yeah, think that is tr- I just love the way that they're, they've come back into the spotlight is through this trolls movie and the way that they've teased it a little bit old school, blending it with these new marketing strategies yeah. of social media and trending sounds. Um, I think it's been so smart mm-hmm. and especially, um, how much in advance, like the build up, the anticipation, they're really doing a great job of that for this new song to drop on September 29th. And then there's still another couple months till the movie. They're right. really like amping people up mm-hmm. for a big release of mm-hmm. new music of new and music, yeah. a movie premiere, yeah. which is really awesome. Well, and my favorite piece of their whole social media strategy, because I love storytelling. Clearly, I love long format content because <laughs> yes. I'm a YouTuber and with this podcast. And so the last piece that they put out, um, I think it was the day after the VMAs, maybe sometime in the middle of the day, Justin put out like a long format video on their YouTube, on his Instagram, and then it later it hit um in sync's Instagram and it was horizontal. It was not yeah. vertical, which yeah. I loved. And it was just him in the studio saying, Hey guys, the stars aligned for this. And you know, I've, I've made this song and I would just, you know, if we make this record, it's going to be a love song to our fans and appreciation yes. to our fans. And I would love to have the group on the song. And then it just like goes into them, like producing it and making it. And I swear in that moment after that, just 15 second introduction, I was a little weepy. Yeah. I was like, look at this guy that has had so much success. And you know, he didn't, he didn't have to do this, I guess. But like, he felt in his heart, I want to do this, like, I want to bring them in. And I think we should make music again. Because honestly, for being honest, it was up to him, it was up to Justin, if they were ever going to make music again. And for him to bring them into a project and then just be like, y'all, y'all are my brothers and let's share this moment together. It could have been all (laughs) acting (laughs) and made up because I know he's an actor, but it got me. So Justin, kudos, kudos to you. It was so heartwarming as an NSYNC fan. I've watched that clip about 20 times. I know. I watched it (laughs) probably three or four times last night (laughs) in preparation. Okay, nice. So the fun part too about this social media strategy is that once they just put out one piece of content, then everybody is going to go promote it by just these different TikTok yes. videos. I mean, I've seen all these ones of people our age going back to their gigantic CD cases and pulling out the CD. I've seen all kinds of stuff. And, you know, that's really smart, too, in this age of social media to, yeah. you know, put it out there and then know that your fans are just going to take it. And Not only are it. they resharing it. But they're making their own mm-hmm. content based on it. And yes. I haven't made any of my own content on it, but I reshared everything. And I was like weaving a story <laughs> in with my followers on Instagram. And I was even thinking, man, I'm probably going to lose at least 5,000 followers doing this. And even at the end of it, because I just kept posting and posting and writing things because I was so invested. And on the last one, I did a poll and I said, hey, like, what do you think of my instinct content? Like, I am so annoyed or we just became best friends. And I got a lot of I'm so annoyed, but I also got a ton of we just became best (laughs) friends. And I'm looking through that list. I'm like, oh, yeah, these are my people right here. Like, these are my people. Let's go to the concert together. And it created like this huge sense of community on my posts because people were responding. I mean, it's the most responses I think I've gotten in in weeks. And it wasn't had and didn't have anything to do with a project. It just like, that's what I love about this is it's bringing people together that Mm -hmm. maybe have not talked in a long time, um, that didn't think they have anything else in common. And, you know, I've had some people that message me like, I'm so excited about NSYNC. And I was surprised. I'm like, you liked NSYNC? I would have never pictured you as an NSYNC. And it's like bonding us. And it's creating that community. And it's really fun. Yes, that is why we always say, like, the things you think that your followers don't care about They might care. They really might care. And guess what? If they don't care and they're upset enough that they want to leave over me posting five things about NSYNC, I don't even really need them following me. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, we have to uh, disclaimer, and and we're gonna go into story time. Christina is officially super fan status. Super fan status. Maggie's just kind of like I they was were cool. a fan. I liked them. So that's there's a little bit of a difference. Yeah, like, I mean, I still love them. I will still probably go see them, but I probably have a price threshold. And you probably, I don't. probably don't. And that, but <laughs> honestly, although I haven't talked to my husband about this, so I'm sure he would be like, "Oh no, there's a definite threshold." <laughs> but that was my favorite TikTok that I saw, and I shared this with a number of my friends. It was just like a ring camera footage of a of a wife talking to her husband, <laughs> being like. Okay, so let's talk about how much I'm willing to spend on NSYNC. Like, what do you think? And he's like, I don't know. And she's like, I'm thinking $3,000. And just her like reasoning and going over it and everything. And it was like such a, they weren't really filming it. It's like grainy camera. It was just like, I mean, she probably knew that was filming her, yeah. but I don't think she knew she was going to put it up on TikTok. And it is like my favorite. And oh my I've been gosh. sending that. All the people that are like, yes, I'm down. If there's a concert, like we're totally going. I have been sending that to everybody. And I would say, I mean, I would pay over $999 to go. I would pay really? somewhere in the thousands. Yeah, at 100%. You would pay thousands. Yeah. I, I think would. thousand would be a threshold for me. As much as I want to go, I just don't know if I could do it. If I it was mean, over a thousand. I would hope that there would be one in Nashville. We don't even know that there's going to be a tour, yeah. y'all, but we're just all theorizing in our heads and yes. we're all just waiting with bated breath. We're like, they can't, this can't be it. It can't just be a new song. Right. One of my, one of my favorite theories that a friend sent me was what about a Vegas residency? And I'm like, Oh, that okay. makes a, a limited time. Vegas Reagan's residency makes a lot more sense because yes. it's a lot logistically easier you don't have to have all these tour trucks and you know, they're, we're a little bit older now. I don't think those boys want to be <laughs> well, they have kids around and the families country. Families yeah. Too. So it makes it a little easier where you could fly in maybe for a Thursday through Sunday show, be dark part of the week. The set is always up smaller venue, but I think you can charge higher prices and because they are a little bit older, maybe not moving quite the way that they used to, you can bring in a lot of background dancers and a lot of special effects to really still have kind of like the in sync feel. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm like, that's uh, a pretty good that's theory. That's an interesting theory. <laughs> well, so tell us. Your fondest in sync memory. Okay. Well, I will. I do want to tell my fondest memory, but I do want to just give a little background since I am a super fan okay. about just my love and how it started. And I've been an in sync fan from the very beginning since I heard I Want You Back. I was like, this is a good song. I need to figure out who these kids are. Well, then once I figured out that Justin and JC were in that group, I would, I, it, I was obsessed because I had been so obsessed with them in the Mickey Mouse Club and like, was in love with JC probably when I was, you know, the first time I saw him, like he nine was years your old or favorite, 10 years old. Not Justin? No, JC, because I wow. had seen him on the Mickey Mouse Club. He was like older. So probably when I started watching the Mickey Mouse Club, he was probably like 16 or 17. And I was probably like 12. And I was just like, oh, I'm so in love. And his voice is just like the voice of an angel. He used to sing Richard Marks on the Mickey mm. Mouse Club all the time. So I like was legitimately in love with him before I understood what that means. <laughs> The weight of it so I really probably thought that I was like gonna you know date him as a teenager which is so funny now oh. and I look at him now and I'm like oh no I like I really love my husband I think my husband is way more attractive than him but you know when you're young oh yeah just those those superstar crushes like you know say by the bell Zach Morris okay like, that was more of a crush of yeah mine than and I talk, I try to talk to my daughter about stuff like this. And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, is there no sh TV show that you watch that you think the boy is so cute or like a singer? And she's like, ew, mom. No, that's weird. I'm like, okay, I guess I was just a little boy crazy or something. I think you were. So I remember NSYNC was going to play at the Ryman, which is a venue in Nashville that's really, small really venue. small. I don't even know how many it fits, but it's got to be under like a thousand people. Yeah. I have no idea. Like it's that. very it's small. small. And uh, this was back in the day where you had to go stand in line at Ticketmaster at like a Kroger or something to get tickets. Yes. And I remember telling my dad, I'm like, Dad, I just really want to go to this concert. Will you please try to get tickets for me? And he's like, I'll do like what I can. And it, I remember it sold out like instantly. And he's like, I'm sorry, honey, I didn't I wasn't able to get you tickets. And I worked at Target at the time and this girl got tickets and I was so mad. I was like, <laughs> why did she get tickets? And I didn't. Um, so that's, you know, my obsession ran pretty deep. 
would always watch, you know, the videos and TRL. I don't think yes. I ever called in to vote for their video. So that probably would have been a higher level of, <laughs> of fandom. Of fandom. But um, going to my favorite memory, I did finally get to go to a concert. I got to go to the No Strings Attached concert. And that was at, in Nashville at the huge stadium where the Titans play. And it was so much fun. And I was, I think I was 19. So I remember going with my girlfriends. I remember exactly what I wore. I had tight black pants that had like silver streaks through them. The, but like the bell bottom things that we all wore the tight yes. black pants with no zipper. They were just like I elastic remember. band. <laughs> and I had a tube top that like was slanted like this way. I remember how everything was like slanted mm-hmm. the hemlines. And then it had like rhinestones down there. And I just thought I was <laughs> doing it. I wish we had a picture. I wish I had a picture and I don't think that I have one. I think maybe one of my friends does. I might try to dig one up, but I really don't think that I have one. And the funny thing is, is that we were 19, so we were not of drinking age, but um, we went to school around here. I went to MTSU, which is like 45 minutes outside of Nashville. And a lot of our friends would work the concessions. So we had a friend who like, he's like, if you just show me your ID, you can get beer. And so we just showed him. Oh no. And we were drinking beer and I have a couple of college friends that get a little mouthy and there were a lot of moms there with their daughters and we had a police officer come up to us and was like, can I see your ID? And we were like, Oh no, we're going to get kicked out of the NSYNC concert. He was very kind and just told us to go dump it out and not go by anymore. Uh, we are, I'm so grateful that I didn't get arrested wow. at the NSYNC concert because <laughs> my parents would have killed me. <laughs> so there's a juicy little detail of you, my fondest NSYNC memory. I also got to go see them on their second tour, their pop odyssey tour in the Memphis pyramid, which is no longer a venue. It's now a bass pro bass pro shop. Yeah. Which you may have seen on dude. Perfect at some point. So (laughs) there's there's juicy details. Juicy details. Remember when I was really listening to NSYNC was my freshman year of college and I was broke. Yeah. And so there was no way I was affording a concert. Um, But my friends and I, what we could afford is we would like drive around, cruise around in the afternoons when we were bored and listen to the No Strings Attached album. And we'd go and get Sonic happy hour drinks and just cruise around singing at the top of our lungs, probably looking crazy to everyone who passed by. But that is when I remember listening to their music the most was that freshman year of college. That's so So. fun. I yes. remember how all the boys would like make fun of NSYNC and like yeah. hated NSYNC. Um, but they would always play them at the clubs and the bars at yes. college. And again, this is when we were listening to NSYNC. That's the age that I was. And there was a group of guys. They were like five guys. And one of them, I think, actually went on to dance background for Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson. Wow. But he taught these four other guys like at my college how to dance. And they would get up on the stages and they would do like the bye 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 dance and they would do the it's going to be me dance. And the <laughs> ladies ate it up. Oh, so I all bet. the other guys were like making fun of, oh, NSYNC sucks. They're the worst, blah, blah, blah. And these five guys would get up and dance on the stage. And they never had a lack of ladies trying to talk to them and get their phone number. Oh my so, gosh, that's so smart. they capitalized. I remember trying to learn that dance <laughs> with some of my sorority sisters, like yeah. trying to teach it to ourselves as we watched the music video. But their dancing was so it good. It was so good. I loved it. I did a little deep dive last night on YouTube and watched the making of the tour of No Strings Attached. And it was really fun. And my kids were coming, are you watching NSYNC again, mom? I'm like, yes, I am. It's, yes. it's going to be a little obsession Guilty. for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, so anything else about this social media strategy that you really liked or appreciated or stand it? stood out to you? I just, I think it seems very organic and I know Mm -hmm. it's probably not. So I just want to say kudos to their team or whoever's organizing this or whoever they have, you know, got in their camp. That's like, let's just do these little nuggets and see Mm -hmm. how people respond. I don't even know. Maybe the fan response to this is making them think about a tour if they weren't thinking about a tour. Yeah. Um, so I just love the access we have to them now and the access that they're letting us have. They haven't turned off comments on any of their videos, which I think is awesome. And the majority of what I've seen in the comments is really positive. Yeah. So I think it's just so smart. It's fun. It's a fun case study. And just to be so invested in who it's about has made it that much more fun (laughs) for me. Um, So I can't wait to see what happens next and what they do next. And I'm just excited to listen to the new song that drops on September 29th. I know. And even if they don't end up 
touring for whatever reason, they certainly have set them up themselves up for a wildly successful soundtrack yeah. to this movie and and maybe just do an album for fun if they want. You don't have to have a huge record yeah. label behind you like back in the day. And that's another cool thing about them is that they came up, they were formed, you know, by a manager who took huge advantage of them Mm -hmm. and they had sold millions and millions of records and then they only got like twenty thousand dollars for it and they ended up taking him to court and suing him and getting freedom of their music and really becoming active in writing and having publishing rights Mm -hmm. on their music and taking control of their career so um it's just a good story it's a good good story story. now they can do that on their own terms yeah i love it yes so fun 40-something, 30-somethings will certainly appreciate whatever they do. So if you, if there is going to be a tour and you're interested, you let me know down in the comments because I'm willing to, you know, get it, get tribes together and do parties <laughs> and all sorts of, th- I don't know. Well, it'll be crazy. It'll be fun. It so will be so fun. I want to hear if you're a super fan like me. I never had posters up on my wall, but I sure did think I was going to meet them one day and maybe get to go on a date with JC. <laughs> Did you have the merch too? So delusional. I never bought merch. You didn't. It just wasn't, I was too old, I think. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't as much of a thing back then. I don't yeah. Think I think, yeah. Now. In the And I had done so much of that in the 80s with the New Kids on the Block. I had buttons and posters. Oh, yes. And I had it Got all, all the bop, bop magazines and stuff. But like when Instinct came out, I'm like, well, I'm their age. I'm too mature for that, <laughs> I think was the thing. But now I'll, you know, they actually do. They started putting out merch like last year. Did they? Yeah, they opened back up their website and because again, the deep dive because it had been pretty silent on their Instagram and stuff mm-hmm. for a while until all this stuff happened. But they did start putting out merch like last year. And it's like they have lyrics on sweatpants and sweatshirts. I'm like, Oh, this is cute. I might need some of this. So I'm thinking about it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so fun. Yeah, well, yeah, should we go move into our favorite things? move into favorite things? Okay. Yeah. Do you, you want to go first? Um, sure. So the, um, you know, if you watched our last episode, we are starting this new segment where we get to talk about our favorite things, because yes. as we said in our last <laughs> podcast, one of our favorite things is when people recommend things to us and then we like it, or if we yeah. recommend something to our friends and they like it and it helps them out. So we're just here to help you guys out to help you maybe find a little bit of style, a good eyeliner, um, a good podcast to listen to. And yes. this week, we're going to do some of our favorite fall fashion finds because mm-hmm. in honor of LTK's exclusive sale that they're going to be doing that is starting Friday, it's going to be with some of our favorite brands. And like I said in the last podcast, Abercrombie is one of my favorite brands, and they are going to be part of that exclusive sale. And so if you shop through our LTK, you are going to be able to get extra savings that you can't get on the website alone. So we have our LTK linked in our YouTube if you want to go check that out and follow us. But one of my favorite things for fall that I think Abercrombie does super well is faux leather. So I have my faux leather leggings on today. I also have a couple of styles in like a jean pant. And I just think that faux leather is so elegant. Mm -hmm. It's you can really like dress it up, but you can dress it down too. I love wearing these leggings with like an oversized sweatshirt and just some tennis shoes. And it just makes me feel like really put together. And I think they do their faux leather really well. And faux leather is a lot cheaper than buying real leather. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot more, you know, animal friendly if you're into that. So those are some of, and they have tons of stuff right now. They have skirts and dresses and all sorts of things. So if you're into faux leather, definitely check that out. So that would be my favorite thing right now. Yes. I love them. They're so cute. Thank you. Um, My favorite thing. Well, I have two favorite things. One is part of the LTK sale and one is not, but the first thing is my sweatshirt and this is from Amazon and it is a in, a sweatshirt inspired by Lululemon. It is the best one that I have found. And I have bought, I think this is the third one that I've bought off of Amazon, but this one is so nice and like thick and soft. And it even has the hair tie on the zipper. Um, and it comes in these fun colors. This is coffee gray. And I ordered a large because I like it to be a little bit oversized. But this sweatshirt is also a learning lesson for me that... (laughs) I was going to say, why did you spend so much time saying inspired by? Because one thing that we have discovered recently is that on YouTube and TikTok, they are really policing the word D-U-P-E. So as you're posting to your socials, 
if you use that word in reference to something that you're wearing or creating, you're going to get flagged. Yeah. And specifically with a brand name. Yes. So if you say like Lululemon, D-U-P-E, <laughs> that is getting flagged yes. now. And it's, it is it, it is something that is definitely in the lexicon. People have been using that forever and they are just really starting to flag that as counterfeit yes. because that word is short for duplicate, which is basically a counterfeit. So we're mm-hmm. just having to change the language to be... Yes, to be different. And it for me, I really have to consciously do it. Yeah. Um, so anyways, this is the best Lululemon lookalike sweatshirt there you go. that I have found. It is great. <laughs> it's in our LTK. We'll link it um, in the description box. So that is my first favorite. It even has the thumb holes. I mean, it's so good, you guys. And Those would be good for our daughters too, yes. I think. Do they and have an extra small? I believe so. Okay. And this is, I think it was like under $40, okay. which is amazing. Um, and then my jeans are my Madewell stovepipe jeans, which are part of the LTK sale this weekend. Madewell is a part of that. And um, I love these ones. They are super stretchy. They are a straight cut down, but kind of hug your leg like a skinny jean used to, but not at the ankle. So it's like a straight cut. And I had to size down in these, but they are like the most comfortable everyday wear with sneakers. Um, jeans. That's a good tip that you had to size down because I feel like that's rare. Yes. These are a good like mid rise for me. Okay. They hit right at or above my belly button. And yes, they're super stretchy. So they kind of, they stretch out and I did size a full size down in them. And yeah, I love them. Okay, cool. I've got a full outfit of favorites. on. Nice. I love it. Um, so thank you again <laughs> for <laughs> indulging us in another episode. I know yes. we've had some like really fluffy episodes <laughs> lately, but we have some some meat coming in the yes. next three episodes that we just filmed last week and we're really excited about them. Yes, and we I definitely think, dive deep yeah, into some different, very vulnerable subject conversations. Yeah, yes, coming up. So stay tuned for that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I hope you guys had fun listening um, to us talk about our love for In Sync. In Sync. I wish we could have sing some songs, <laughs> but we don't want to get flagged for copyright. I know. <laughs> it's okay. That's a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we're so glad you're here. Please like sound off in the comments. Like we love to hear from you guys, uh, your love for NSYNC. Are you annoyed by all the talk? Who's your favorite band member? Um, let us know in the comments. You can find all of our favorite things in our LTK link, which we will include in the description box below as well. Make sure to subscribe if you aren't already hit the notification button and give us a thumbs up. We certainly appreciate that. And same if you're listening on Spotify or Apple podcasts, we would love for you to um, leave a review for us because yeah, that helps. It helps get it out to other people, get it out to other people. And we love to hear from you. So thanks in advance for doing that. (laughs) And we'll see you next time in the Cypress room. So see you next time. See you next time.